While, while the break was in process, uh, in progress, I should say, Jim Glazer and I were talking about Roy Orbison, and he told me a wonderful story. Tell me about Roy well, Orbison. Well, this was, this was back in, when I was working with Marty in 1958 or 9, somewhere along in there. We were working a rodeo out in Texas, and a little fella came up to me backstage, and he had on sunglasses that wrapped all the way around, looked like, you know, a beetle or something. And he came up to me and shook hands and said, my name is Roy Orbison, and I'm going to be a star. And I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that was before, of course, he ever recorded. How right? long after that did uh, those records begin? Well, to... it wasn't that long. And, you know, the Glazer Brothers uh, did background vocals on one of his tunes, Leah, then later on. Did you ever remind him of that? No, I didn't have the heart to. <laughs> but I never forgot it. The special, the sure part, sure. I, yeah, I take everybody serious nowadays. <laughs> How long did you work with Marty Robbins? About two and a half years. You were on some classic records that he made weren't you the western things primarily weren't you on el paso yeah that whole first album the western song. gunfighter ballads and trail songs yeah big big iron the uh, masters wasn't ah. on big iron and masters call that was the jordanaires but the uh, the standards like uh cool water and tumble and tumble weeds and 160 acres things that he used the trio on uh, i can't we take those. that away from you can they no that's, that's a piece of history I understand you want to plug your fan club. Yeah, I better. Do you have any fans? Well, I've got one. <laughs> That's why we moved the fan club to Hastings, Nebraska. That's where the fan lives. and <laughs> We thought it'd be easier that way. Who's out there in, uh, by, at Box 307 running the fan club? Lisa Ryan. Okay. Is this a new fan club? Well, it's the same fan club. It's just under new, uh, new president, new management, as they say. Okay. Are you going to Switzerland? Switzerland and Germany uh, next month, actually. Really looking forward to that. That's one of the little luxuries of the business, is being able to, to, uh, to go abroad and, and have your music take you over there. And they love country music so much over there. We adjust our show a little bit because they like the traditional. Let me ask you a question. So, uh, I, I was talking to Amy Lou Harris today about this thing. She doesn't take souvenirs with her to sell on the road. But she was talking about in Europe, they are really hungry to buy that sort of thing. Do you take souvenirs to Europe? Can't take them to Europe because by the time you pay duty, you can't afford to sell them. Oh, okay. Duty you know, is you know the t-shirts and the yeah, we carry, records and all that sort of thing. We carry pictures and records here, but we, you can't take them over there. It's just too much of a hassle. You can't make, it, you can't make any money. No. Okay. okay, all right. There's always customs, right? <laughs>